Hi, I'm going to show you how to replace and align the lamp in your tunable light source system. So if you have our TLS-75X or our TLS-300X models, you're going to want to follow this procedure because you have a xenon lamp inside your tunable light source. So before beginning this procedure, it's important to follow the necessary safety precautions. So we're going to make sure that both our power supply and our monochromator are not only powered off but unplugged as well. It's also important to wear safety glasses because you're working with a high pressure xenon lamp and it's also important to wear powder free gloves as well because you never want to touch the glass envelope of a lamp with your bare hands. So we're going to put on our safety glasses and there's six thumb screws that fix the side panel of the lamp housing. We're going to unscrew these to allow us to access the lamp. Once those six thumb screws are removed, we're going to gently remove the side panel to the blank housing. So this is our Xenon arc lamp. It's reached the end of its lifetime and we're going to replace it. So to start, first we're going to loosen this screw over here and loosen the bottom end of the lamp. And then there's also a screw at the top of the lamp attached to the center block holding the top end of the lamp in place. So we're going to loosen that too. We're actually going to completely remove this screw. And then we're going to remove the sensor block from the top portion of the lamp. And now we've just removed our xenon lamp and we're getting ready to replace it. Uh, this is the socket adapter. It's attached to the bottom end of the lamp and it should unscrew simply like this very easily. And now you've just uninstalled your Xenon lamp and you're ready to replace it with a new one. So this is our new Xenon arc lamp. We're getting ready to replace it into our tunable light source. So these next few steps are very important. When you install a new Xenon arc lamp, you should notice that there's a positively marked N. This is the anode of the Xenon arc lamp. And there's also the cathode, which is a, a negatively marked end. When you install the xenon arc lamp into your system, it's very important that the socket adapter be installed to the cathode or the negatively biased end and it should also be installed with the negatively biased end or the cathode facing downward like so. Uh, you'll also notice that there's this starter wire on the lamp. It's very important that you not remove this starter wire. It helps with the ignition of the lamp. So to begin to replace this lamp, we're going to place the socket adapter onto the cathode end of the lamp. And then we're going to reinsert the lamp into the lamp housing. So again, with the cathode or the negatively biased end, it's going to go seated downward into the lamp housing. And that starter wire that I mentioned before, you don't want that starter wire to show up in the image of your lamp output. So we're gonna move the starter wire so it's facing the, the side wall inside the lamp housing. And once we've inserted the uh, xenon arc lamp, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten it at the bottom by tightening this thumb screw again. And the sensor block, it's going to slide over the top of the xenon arc lamp like so. And this thumb screw that we removed before, once we have the sensor block at the top of the xenon arc lamp, we're going to reattach it and fix that sensor block to the top of the arc lamp. So again, I stress that it's very important that the cathode be uh, pointing downward when you install the xenon arc lamp into your system. Installing the xenon arc lamp upside down into your system can not only cause the lamp to burst, which is very dangerous, but it could also shorten the lifetime of the lamp as well. And now that the lamp is installed, we're going to actually begin the alignment procedure here. 
So if you notice before when I removed the side panel of the lamp housing, there's lamp horizontal and lamp vertical. So that refers to these side knobs and the direction that they move the lamp inside the housing. What you want is the arc lamp to be visually in the center of the focusing lens assembly of the lamp housing. And you're going to do this by eye the best you can before you reattach the side panel of the lamp housing. I mean, visually, it's as best as you can get it. What you're going to do is you're going to remove, replace the lamp housing with the door like this. And reinsert those six thumb screws we removed earlier to remove the side panel of the lamp housing. So now we're going to fix it back in place. So now that we've installed the lamp and replaced the side panel to the lamp housing, we're ready to ignite the lamp. So we're going to turn on our power supply and our monochromator. So for this demonstration, I'll be using our handheld controller for the monochromator. For those of you that prefer to use your laptop for uh, external control, there's also a USB 2.0 connector on the monochromator as well, and it can be controlled using our TrackQ software designed for this system. And when you're ready, we're going to ignite the lamp so you can see the light output from the system. And it also helps to have a wider black sheet of paper to serve as a backdrop a few inches away from the light source so you can see the output of the light source. And it also helps to set your monochromator to zero to achieve a white light output. So now that we've ignited our xenon arc lamp, what we're going to do is we're going to focus the image of the arc between the anode and the cathode. And this is done by unscrewing the focusing knob on the focusing lever between the research lamp housing and the filter wheel. And we're actually going to move this knob all the way to the front of the system, so it's as far away of the lamp housing as you can get, and then once it's in that position, we're gonna tighten the knob at the top of the focusing lever to lock it in place. Um, so what you'll notice there is that there are two images. You have a primary image. This is the primary image of the arc between the anode and the cathode. And there's also a smaller and uh, fainter image of the arc. This is from the rear reflector inside the lamp housing. So for this portion of the alignment, we're gonna focus on the primary arc and you can see we have a circular output of the lamp, but the arc isn't centered within that circular output. So we're gonna use those horizontal and vertical adjustment knobs that we used earlier to both vertically and horizontally center that lamp or center the arc of the lamp into that circular spot size as best we can. And once it's centered, now we're going to focus on the secondary image of the arc. We're going to use those rear reflector adjustment knobs at the rear of the housing that we used earlier. And what you want is you want the secondary image of the arc to completely be superimposed with the primary image, like so. So again, this was the secondary image, and you'll notice that as you rotate those rear reflector adjustment knobs, the secondary image of the arc will move in a particular direction. But what you want is to superimpose and almost completely hide the secondary image of the arc lamp behind that of the primary image. And what this is actually going to do is this is going to increase your brightness, because now the secondary image from the arc lamp 
being completely reflected onto the primary. So this is increasing the output power of the lamp and saving you backscatter that you would have lost otherwise. And once they are completely superimposed, and you, as in you only see one image of the arc, we're gonna loosen that focusing knob at the top of the focusing lever, the lamp that we used before. And we're gonna move it closer to the lamp housing until you see a uh, uniform white light output from the lamp.